Unfortunately, the Google Ads dashboard is an ever-changing beast. And just when you think you know exactly what you're looking for in Google Ads, Google goes and does it again and changes things. And over the past couple of weeks and months, I've noticed that Google is at it again and making changes to the Google Ads dashboard. So in this video, I wanted to go through an extended screen share so that I can show you the different elements of the Google Ads dashboard. And this part is important because even though Google is making some different changes all the time, if you can understand how the layout of the Google Ads dashboard works, you're gonna be much better prepared so that every time Google makes a little change, you're not gonna be going around and trying to find where certain things are. Because even though Google is changing some of the naming conventions and some of the different names of different things, the actual layout is very much the same. And then I will be taking you through some of the biggest changes. And then finally, I wanna take you through what to do if you ever get lost, is because there are a couple of easy things you can do so that you can find exactly what you're looking for, regardless if you've been using Google Ads for 10 years or only 10 days. And I do wanna make one quick point before we go into the screen share is that Google is going through the process of updating these and the way that Google does these changes is they do do them in a bit of a, a better testing format. So you may not be seeing exactly what I'm gonna show you in the screen share and if that is the case, never fear because in a couple of weeks time when you come back into Google Ads, I'm sure you'll be seeing the same things of what I'm about to show you. But before we get into that, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads Master. And regardless of the current stage that you're at in your Google Ads journey, the one thing that you need is that you need a clear optimization strategy so that you know exactly what you're gonna be optimizing in your Google Ads account every 72 hours, every week, every month, and every 90 days. And if you would like to get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, and this is a checklist which I still use today, and I put it together so that I know exactly what I need to be doing every single day that I do some Google Ads optimizations. And if you would like to get your free copy right now, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. But right now, let's get into that screen share so I can show you how to navigate the Google Ads dashboard. When it comes to the Google Ads dashboard, the first thing that I want you to understand is that I want you to think of the screen of what you're looking at as three columns. We've got our first one in here, which is this dark gray section. Then this little lighter gray is the second column. And then we've got all the information in here on our third column. And the way to think of this is that this is your main menu, this first column, this one here is your sub menu, so it relates to this main menu, and then this is all of the data layout. So at the moment, because we've selected all of our campaigns, this sub menu allows us to navigate to all of these individual campaigns, and the data is related to all campaigns. So if we were to go into this campaign section, it brings out the three different campaigns that we have active in this account right now. But if we were to go into the main menu, this first column and select just one of these campaigns, you can see now that it just relates to the ad groups within this one campaign. And then if we'll go down even further and just collect one of these ad groups, once again, it's taken us down into the data that relates to this one ad group. And if we wanna go back, what we can do, rather than having to click back, you can just go into this main campaign. And then once again, it brings back the data for everything involved in this campaign. And if we were to go to all campaigns, we're now looking at the ad groups for all of these campaigns, or we can select in campaigns. So the first thing that I wanna bring your attention is when you're looking at a Google Ads dashboard, always think about it in three different columns. Column one, the main heading, column two, the subheading, and then column three is all of the data that you wanna see. And if you ever get lost, it's always just a matter of going back to this first column. The one thing that I will just mention as well, if you're not seeing this big column to the left, it could be because you're on a smaller screen and you just need to drop over this arrow and you can either show or hide that one from there. Now, another thing that I do just wanna point out to make it really easy is that the two main viewpoints that I look at when I'm looking at a campaign is I'll go into this overview section. And once again, the way that you can do it, you can see this overview related to all the campaigns or you can just go into an individual campaign. We'll go back to all campaigns. And this overview section, this is the section that I do really, really like because it allows you to see some really just some big trends of how the account is going. You can change this. So at the moment we've got conversion rate, but if we wanted to see how our cost is going, we can add the cost. And then if you just click on these tiles, you can actually you take them out of the graph. So if you wanna see how your cost and your conversions are going, you can see some different trends. 
all the time wherever you are in Google Ads you will always have this date range so if you were to go through and change the date let's just change it to the 1st of June it automatically changes all of this data the other thing that you can do in this overview section is with these three dots so whenever you see three dots in Google Ads it's going to be giving you some more options and you can break this down to daily or monthly if you've got a longer term data so over one or two years this even breaks it down to quarterly for you as well the other main section which I go to which gives me some really quick overview data of how the campaign is performing or how the account is performing is you can see from here that I've actually got this segment function now this is a function that a lot of people don't really understand how it works and what you can do is you can add in this segment and we're going to add it in by conversions conversion action that then allows us to see the different campaigns and how this is performing now now the reason for why I like this one as you can see we've got two different conversion actions here we've got a phone calls or a calls from ads and then also a Google Ads form completion conversion active so this allows me to really really quickly see the difference of the type of conversions that we've got if you're running an e-commerce campaign you could even break this down so you could see how your campaigns are performing in terms of transaction goals or any other conversion actions you have like app downloads and that allows you to get Get a really quick overview of which campaigns are driving phone calls or which campaigns are driving transactions or extra revenue so that's the other main segment function that I use in there the other one that I do use a lot is this columns function now this columns function relates to the different data points that you're seeing in this table and if you wanted to see some extra things so let's just say we also want to view our search impression share we can type that in here and then we can click in any other ones that we wanted to add in and what you can also do is that you can also remove any of these by clicking the X and you can also change the order so let's just say we want to see our search impression share right next to the cost we pull these up once we're happy we click apply and then you can see our search impression share is in there as well so that's a really quick overview of how to look at and how to navigate Google Ads is that You've got this main heading through here, subheading, and then all the data. So always think about those three columns. So what I wanna do now is I just wanna take you through some of the biggest changes. And the first one is around just this language change of, so this little tab in here used to be called ads and extensions. It's now called ads and assets. And the ads have stayed the same, and the assets relate to extensions. So this used to be ads and extensions, and then you'd have the ads, and then the extensions here. Now it's ads and assets. So if you're wondering where your extensions are, they are now under this assets tab. And it pretty much works the same way it's visually a little bit different I was used to the other one but this is a great way you can just go through and click on the different extensions which you may have in your account and then if you want to you can see all of them at the same time or if you just want to go to your site links you can click on these or your call extensions you can see them through there and then another main section which has changed is if you go into this reports section you used to be able to see your extensions report through this predefined reports. It used to be called dimensions back in the day, then it went to predefined reports. Now it's under assets legacy, and this is a big one that I like to use, especially if you're running a service-based business that is focusing on phone calls. If you go into reports, then into this predefined report, and then into this assets and core details. And the reason why I like this report is because it brings up the call duration, and then you can also see the caller area code. And depending where you're located, you can even see the call number. And then another change which has happened is if you go into your tools and settings, is that in this shared library, Google now allows you to add in some new assets. And what you can even do in here is that you can click on this new button, and you can even add in a new video. For Performance Max campaigns, the best option is still to create your very own ads, upload them into YouTube. But if that's not available to you or it's not an option that your client wants to go down, you can create some new little videos using these templates. Once again, they're not ideal, but at least you can go through, add in some of your primary colors, and you can even add in some different logos and images. And if you wanted to as well, you can even add in a different voiceover. Once again, not ideal, but it is better than Google just creating it by itself. So those main changes are around rather than it saying ads and extensions, it's now that ads and assets and all of your extensions are under that assets tab. If you're like me and you'd like to see that call reporting all the time, you can see that still in the report section and then it's in that assets and legacy and then you go into call details. And then finally, especially if you're using Performance Max campaigns, and you wanna be able to create some different videos, you can use that new asset library function. Where we go into tools and settings, 
shared library, asset library, and then add in that new video. So finally, I wanna just bring you down to a really quick function if you ever get lost. So let's just say you can't find those extensions anymore, just go into the search function up here. And if you were to type in extensions, you can see here that it's automatically taken you into your assets. And then you can see your different site links or your different call out or call extensions that you have. And then once again, if you ever get lost and you don't know where to go and you can't see your keywords, you can just type in keywords and it'll take you to your search keywords. So that is a really, really simple function that I use quite a bit because I do find that it can save some different clicks. So if you wanna even go into your locations, you can type in locations and then it brings up all those different options that you have. So if you ever do find yourself getting lost in the Google Ads dashboard, just use that search function and type what you wanna see and it'll give you the different options so you can see it straight away. So I hope that screen share has given you now some easy tips on how you can easily navigate through the Google Ads dashboard. And remember, always think of the Google Ads dashboard as those three main columns, where you've got your main heading, your subheading, and then all of that data in the middle. And remember, if you ever get lost, just use that search function. Once again, thank you for joining me. And remember, if you wanna go through and grab your Google Ads optimization checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And if you wanna see how I go about optimizing my Google Ads campaigns, just go through and watch this video right here. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.